So, Tedonofuji and Mitake Umi are out of hospital. Perhaps news to you, and certainly to me, as we knew not they'd been in hospital until Monday. It was more a matter of proper isolation than severe symptoms, Sumo's press chief claimed, but with nothing said of why, if that were so, they could not isolate at home or in hotels. In any case, with long COVID largely ignored in Japan, they are now deemed fully recovered and fit to train. And other sufferers are back training too. Takakesho's stable proudly declaring such on Twitter, with the usual vows to ventilate, distance, and mask up. The positive tests of Ura, Hirado Umi, and coach Shikihide, the last to be announced, were among 252 sumo infections post-tournament. A number large enough to perhaps leave you curious as to why. Here's what I presume to be the semi-official version, given off the cuff on February 5th. But I think it's more nuanced than that. On the ground, I can tell you that rules on dining out had been greatly relaxed since the final three days of the November meet, which saw wrestlers encouraged to let hair down. In December then, the sight of top knots in Tokyo restaurants became far more common than before, while coaches were also going to town in every sense. For the Delta variant was by then nigh extinguished, and thus were go-aheads given for non-socially distanced retirement events. The problem was, when Omicron came, everyone kept their end of Delta mentality for the new variant was again portrayed throughout December as an overseas problem. Lots of local people lowered guard. Rules banning direct contact with wrestlers were quietly dropped. Even those of us who specifically asked if handing envelopes straight to them broke any COVID guidelines were told not to worry. And the culmination was no eyelids batted here, a strong contender for Mitake Umi's infection, and beehive scenes like this, actually created by a smaller crowd than on the first and last days of the tournament, but with all entry systems scrapped. Constant throughout, I felt, were two related themes. One, the belief that important bits of the end of Delta schedule should be kept at all costs, regardless of Omicron resulting in rules on food and drink in the arena being relaxed despite all those wrestler infections that week. Two, Sumo's default position, perfectly symbolized by most of those cutting hair, of what would older, wealthier Japanese have us do? Once you twig that the entire pandemic response here has been based on the wishes and values of older, wealthier Japanese, who view COVID rules as threats to all status gained without email or Zoom, including the unique closeness they enjoy with sumo wrestlers, scales fall from eyes. Testing is not encouraged, resumption of old-style normalcy is, and infections, of course, rise. That's not an official version, I stress, but it is an eyewitness account of, I hope, some value. For now, the next tournament proceeds as planned, with the staggered flow of wrestlers to Osaka starting on March the 4th. There'll be no pre-sumo though, the many debutants told to wait until May after the students among them attend crowded graduation ceremonies, which are, of course, on Delta schedule and not for cancelling. And every wrestler should, by then, be vaccine boosted as they've now been bumped up the queue. The first shots already in sumo arms. 
We know wrestlers can be termed an at-risk group, and I'm happy to see them protected. But they can also be termed the symbols of Japan's return to normal life as preferred by this ruling age group, and its ardent wish for nothing of meaning to change.